Hi everyone and welcome to another installment in our um, PSA implementation series uh, and following up on our billing series in today's video we're going to talk about uh, prepay billing um, you, you know and how to do all of that stuff in um, in Halo. So with me again today I have my favorite person at Halo, uh, Mr. Halo himself. I know I haven't said that to him for a little while so I'm sure he's uh, yeah. he's loving the fact that I'm now uh, stroking his ego. So hey Morgan how you doing mate? Yeah, yeah, good to be back. Hey, Chris. Um, yeah, it's been been a couple of weeks. I I was I was missing that very much. Had to start getting some of my uh, colleagues to uh, call me Mister Halo. So it does it doesn't doesn't sound quite the same as when you say it though. Exactly. I think we need to get you a t shirt, right? And you can just wear that yeah. to and go. I'm Mister Halo. Yeah, or yeah. A badge <laughs> or something, right? Like, uh, hi, my name is Mister Halo. Ask me anything. Oh God, yeah. I'll... <laughs> that uh yeah that could go one of two ways yeah, yeah um yeah so um for you know as as chris mentioned um we've done a few sessions on billing we've covered some of the the core billing mechanisms um there there are a few other topics that we haven't covered yet so the next one that we'll be taking a look at is the the prepay in payment so um I'll start off by mentioning that there are two places where prepay can be configured. Uh, so the first place is against a customer record. So each customer record has their own prepay tab. And the other place, uh, as mentioned in one of the, the previous sessions, was within our agreements, where agreements have our labor type of prepay. I just want to provide a little bit of context here as to why there are two places um, and, and you know, sort of a little brief history of a uh, small part of Halo development. Um, before the labor type prepay was an option in agreements in Halo, the only place to go to add and uh, make use of prepay in Halo was against the customer record. So the prepay tab against the customer has been around for far longer than it has within our agreement types. Now, uh, the limitation of only having it at customer level is that uh, there is only one prepay tab uh, and hence only one prepay sort of bucket running per customer. Uh, so if you did have multiple different sort of, you know, uh, allotted hours, multiple different buckets of prepay time, then, well, that just couldn't happen. Uh, so to, to combat that, we ported the prepay functionality at customer level over and we, um, we moved that functionality into agreements. So I always say to customers new to Halo, MSPs uh, configuring Halo PSA, if you're gonna be making use of prepay, make use of it within the agreement section. Uh, firstly, because of consistency, and uh, you know, making sure that whether it's a fixed or a prepaid agreement, uh, you know where to go to actually check in on those records. And then secondly, uh, the fact that it will allow for multiple agreements of type prepaid to be added and hence multiple buckets of time to be, to be tracked against should you need to do that in the future. Yeah. And that's the way I do it um, mainly, you know, a, a lot of the work I do with, with uh, consulting clients is on prepay buckets of time um and, and i i always do it under the agreement tab so that i can have multiple different types of buckets or multiple different types of um you know types of prepay and and stuff like that so um yeah so that's you know i i, I don't use the the tab underneath the client um name just kind of go into the agreement and do it that way yeah. so either would work yeah cool uh so in terms of setting the, the prepaid agreements up, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go again into our agreements tab, create a new agreement, uh, specify our unique agreement reference, pick our labor type of prepay. Notice how when I change this from fixed to prepay, our hours per period will disappear. Again, I just want to reiterate a point that I mentioned a, a few sessions ago. The, the fixed agreements I like to think of as sort of a use it or lose it type agreement. You have an allotted number of hours uh, or unlimited, but let's say you have an allotted number of hours each month. If the customer doesn't use those hours, 
then that will get reset the following month or the following period. Um, now, when we're making use of our prepay agreements, we don't have quite the same concepts. Uh, and so we don't have the, the hours per period in here. Instead, what we find is upon saving our agreement, we find a prepay tab here against the agreement itself. Now it's pretty much the same options that we have in here as what we had at customer level. Again, sort of reiterating the fact that we uh, effectively copy and pasted the code at customer level and put it into to our agreements. Uh, and the that configuration consists of, um, firstly, our prepay balance. So uh, how much has been added uh, you know, uh, throughout all, the, all of time, how much has been used, uh, how much has expired, and hence what is remaining. Yep. Uh, below that, we have our, our billing where we're specifying that uh, the invoice lines that would be generated from P prepay records, uh, what is the linked item that those lines equate to? Uh, and this is more applicable to uh, to our accounting integrations to make sure that when the invoice goes over to something like QuickBooks, it goes over with the correct item code or you know, the correct GL code, stuff like that. Uh, and then below here as well, we have an option to say that when we are uh, automatically uh, topping up prepay or when we're automatically adding prepay records, uh, don't create an invoice for that. This might be... Uh, merged into the, the services of the agreements recurring invoices, for example, you might not necessarily want to uh, have these invoices generated each month, but you might actually want the time to be topping up. Yeah. Uh, and the, the topping up of that time is based in the recurring prepay section, where uh, in here we have our uh, date of next payment, date of next prepay record to be added. We have our... Uh, X number of months after the prepay time has been added, uh, after which that time would expire. So it might be that, uh, you know, eight hours are added each month. Those eight hours will actually uh, be valid for two or three months. But then after that three month period, then the eight hours uh, will get will become expired and won't be able to be used. The amount is the amount that uh, the customer would be paying. And the hours is the number of hours they're getting for that time. The recurring period, again, very similar to our recurring invoices. This is how frequently these prepay records will be added into Halo. Uh, and then our minimum and automatic deductions, which will uh, reduce prepay time uh, based on that period, uh, based on that recurring period as well. Now, uh, as prepay is being added over time and expiring over time, uh, our prepay records table will be getting updated accordingly. And we'll see here we can actually add manual prepay records in as well. Again, allowing us to specify a number of hours, an amount that was paid for those hours, uh, a date from which they're effective, an invoiced date uh, denoting that the customer has already paid for these hours. An invoice number, if applicable, uh, an expiration date for the prepay time. So it might be that uh, this is valid until the end of the year. And then a note as well, if we need. And of course, you could leave that invoiced date blank if you wanted to go then and send that £1,500 in, as, you know, cre create an invoice for that. If you left that invoiced date blank, then it'll just push that through to billing and create an invoice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so notice how after manually adding that prepay record in here, uh, our total is 12. We haven't used any of those hours. And so our balance is also 12. Yeah. Uh, and then let's go over to <clears throat> our ready for invoicing section. Where we've got our 1500 uh, for those 12 hours that I just added in. Well, let's generate this invoice. I'm not actually sure what we've got the description set as here. So let's have a look at that.
Oh, prepay. Cool. Yeah. So um, this, let's have a look at where this is set. Um, or more generally, let's have a look at some of the configuration options uh, that surround prepay. Now, those are in configuration billing. Prepay, believe it or not. Good place to put it. Yeah. Oh, you never know with Halo. <laughs> well, exactly. I was uh, I was going to say there's as as much as we love this product, there's so many little places to change things that, um, yeah. and and yeah. sometimes there's random places that they put things, and I'm like, why would you do that? But anyway, it's all. Good. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's method to the madness somewhere, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, so in configuration billing prepay, we have some options in here. Uh, some of the more common ones to look out for is uh, uh use pay as you go when prepay runs out. So uh, customers can go into a negative prepay balance. Um, if you're happy to do that, and you know we sort of go back to that previous, previous example where eight hours get topped up each month, but uh, the customer could actually use 12 one month and the following month, you know, when they got the eight, it would actually be four because they're already in a deficit. Um, if you don't want that and you just want time immediately after prepay runs out to be marked as billable, uh, similar to our fixed price agreements, then we can enable this. Yep. Um, this option, prepay must be invoiced before it can be used, uh, says uh, it does as it says on the tin. It means that uh, you need to ensure that the prepay records that are added into the system have been invoiced before they can then be consumed and um, effectively meaning that you're you're not giving anyone time free of charge before you've actually invoiced for it and further to that it might be that uh before the customer's paid for it so a customer um has to pay for the time before that time can then be consumed in the system and, and that kind of makes sense because that's the whole point of blocks right is it's prepaid up front so i think those those tick boxes are things I always recommend people to um, to tick straight away because you know if you if you're gonna give somebody prepaid hours the whole point of the you know the the word is prepay so you pre you know you've you've paid in advance for those hours so yeah I I do and I do the same thing on mine is is to literally say you know unless the customer I'll set everything up but unless the money is actually physically in my bank um, yeah. then I don't I don't actually start any work. Um, you know, so it's yeah. So those are great, great options to have um, if you were doing that kind of thing. For sure, for sure. Uh, and then also down here we see our our invoice line description. Um, so this is where that invoice line description has come from, um, where we're making use of the dollar prepay short date and prepay hours variables. But of course, this can be amended uh, as you need. Uh, cool. Yeah, I think. Um, that's prepay in a nutshell. Just bear in mind, again, it, it's important to have watched the previous session on uh, our billing plan combinations to understand how the time that is then added to tickets would be chipped away against the prepaid buckets of time. Um, so, you know, for example, we would want to make sure that Mario and Luigi's Pizza Place uh, has, and you know, let's not do it this way. Let's say that uh, the Mario and Luigi's Pizza Place MAR 0001 uh, has an inclusion rule where we're saying that uh, this will cover all remote support time. And then... We'll see. Well, okay, so let's have a look here. So then we've seen that um, this has gone to agreement with ID12, which is uh, 
get that out of the way. Which is this agreement, um, with ID 12. But our prepay time looks like it's been removed. Let's look at that. So that's going to expire at the end of the year. Make sure that that is as of today. It's because you ticked those boxes, I think, saying that it needs to be invoiced before it can be used. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah so exactly. You, you, you'd had those boxes ticked, so that's why it's not allowing you to, to do it. But... I, I ran into the exact same problem, actually, a while back when I was first setting this up, is, yeah, they have to be paid before you can actually use it. So I think what it does is, and actually that, I don't know if that's a by design thing, but it actually makes block zero. So it zeroes them out on that yeah. screen we looked at it, which... Technically, it's not really zero. It just hasn't been paid for yet. So you probably just want to uncheck those boxes and then you should be good to go. That's it. Yeah, I think it, it should just be that one because we have actually invoiced it. Um, yeah. So let's double check that. Yeah. The irony. Yeah. I uh, I remember helping you with that. And yeah. That's yeah, exactly. Concern. I think I remember calling you saying, why the heck doesn't this work? And you help me. And now, now yeah. I'm getting it. So that's what this is all about, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, brilliant. So thanks for that, Chris. That's now set to 12. We go back to the ticket. Recalculate our billing. And now that's going to go against those prepay hours. And that should also be reflected on the prepay tab for the customer's agreement. Yep. Well, in total, one used, 11. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, prepay is is fairly straightforward. You know, nothing nothing major. It's a block of time. You use the block and it's um, it's work. So I, I do a lot of, um, I use billing plan combinations. I have a lot of customers that kind of have, you know, a um, recurring service contract for, you know, remote support, but on site support comes out of a block. So you could just use kind of a, you know, billing plan combination for that to just decide like which contract those hours come out of and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, blocks are, are fairly straightforward and I think there's there's nothing majorly on this. One thing that you can do, which we haven't got set up on, on this database, is you, you do actually have the ability to have those show up on the tickets as well, right? So you can actually, you know, directly from... Um, because I don't think I saw it on that ticket, um, which I find quite useful as well, because then you can you don't have to jump back into that prepaid block to see what's been deducted. It just actually um shows it on the ticket itself, which is that one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So show prepay balance on the ticket details screen. Yeah, and then we've got our prepay balance down here on the right hand side. Yeah, and and that's and that's sometimes I think a lot easier to do because then your engineers, your technicians, um, you know, agents, whatever, whatever we call them, have um have the ability to kind of see that straight away. So um, so always make sure you check that box. So yeah, no, I think that's great. That's a a really good, very quick rundown of um of billing, of billing plan, uh, or you know, of um, prepay, how it works, that kind of stuff. So. Really appreciate it again, um, Morgan, and appreciate you jumping on the call with me and going through this. So thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Chris. Yes.